looking for our singers. It's scary being up here by myself. <laughs> it's a good crowd. And, you know, with the cold weather, but more importantly, COVID, you know, it, it's taken a toll. But as I experienced so many times in the last two years, this church bounces back. I want you to know we've had some ups and downs in the Internet over the last month. We went through a camera, had to get a replacement and the um, connection. But the guys have worked hard on that and we got a much better feed. I was just up there and they were showing it to me and it's very high quality. And in this day and age, that becomes more and more important. So I'm thankful for their things being done. I'm thankful for the one I called early this morning. We had a water lane break out in the mission area where the sink was, the hot water. And they came in early this morning after having a week of COVID themselves and um, cut off the hot water heater out there and got it stopped. So we'll get that fixed. And that's, um, I've always noticed that something's going to break. It's going to be Sunday morning. And I'm so thankful that there's people in place. And that was Mark Kelly to call and say, hey, Mark, I need your help. And he rushed over here and took care of it. But I do want us to be in prayer for um, we still have about every day I get called where someone new or a family get, gets COVID. And it's the day and age we live in. And praise God, I've watched everyone bounce back. And now we're, we're starting a challenge. And you know when they ask how many years you've been married or how old you are and how many children you have? In the future, we're going to say, who's had COVID one time? Who's had it five times? And <laughs> but it's good that we can bounce back. We stay healthy. Um, we're not going to have our prayer meeting tonight. Now, Scott and Connie are very private people, and I don't want to bring attention to them, but everybody turn and welcome my friends from Virginia. Um, they were here two years ago, and one thing I'm very fortunate about is our friendship, and even this morning we relived how we would go over sermons together, and Scott would go out every Tuesday, I believe it was, visiting with me and sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. And one thing I'm fortunate, Scott, every six months comes in this area for a doctor's appointment and he spends an extra day or two with me. Anybody say praise God? So I'm glad both of y'all are here and Connie too. So not going to have tonight. Um, we're just going to relax. I'm going to spend time with my friends and have sushi, I believe. Um, so please be in prayer. And it's good too, just to let it slow down a little bit. We are going to have Wednesday night. So I'll see you Wednesday night. I'll be here early with the hot cocoa who is opening us in prayer this morning they're both like not me <laughs> hey there's casey good morning casey would you come on up and open us in prayer is anybody else i don't know i didn't look jimmy benoit are you up for prayer this morning all right come on up let's open in prayer hey we're going to have a fantastic day people are asking me how i'm doing in the last um, week or two especially the last few days uh, my lungs are really getting strong again, so I praise God for that. Good morning. It's been, uh, been a cold week, hasn't it? Um, I don't know, six or eight months now, down at the men's cabin and talking and getting with the men and all, trying to keep keep an eye on everybody and everybody checking on everybody and uh, I've been on Johnny McInville's case I've been on Punk's case and uh, about their health and the issues and all to really be careful and uh, stay away from people and be careful about the virus but Punk went to Costa Rica for his son's wedding he came back home with the virus Johnny Mack, which everybody knows, uh, has got got the virus, and I called him yesterday afternoon to check on him, and he didn't answer the telephone. And me, and me and Miss Vicky were on the way to Florence, and went but a few minutes. Uh, I got a text that says I'm on the way, and it was from Johnny. And I I told Vicky, I said, wonder where he's on the way to. So I called him back. I said, uh, Johnny. He said, yeah, man. I said, where are you on the way to? He said, I don't know, Bo. He said, I, I went to Dillon to do something. 
He said, I came on the way back home. He said, he said I got so sleepy I couldn't hold my head up. He said, I pulled in the yard, and I pulled in just the right place. He said, that sun shining through the windshield and through the side window. He said, I don't know what time it was. He said, but the phone woke me up. He said, I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> and I couldn't help but laugh, you know. And I said, you know, but. He uh, he feels a lot better. He said he wouldn't come into church this morning. He was going to take a couple more days off. And But uh, while I'm thinking about it, there will be no ISI tomorrow night at Punk's. We're going to, with Punk's having it, Johnny having it, and the whole nine yards, we're going to take another week. And there will not be a men's sup, uh, breakfast next month. Uh, we're going to just get one more to be on the safe side. But. Anytime y'all want to get together, uh, we got six or eight of us that meet on Wednesday mornings up there at Southern Charm Meat Breakfast. And uh, last week was my first time, uh, the old gospel place out there on 151. Y'all know where I'm talking about, right there beside Flowers Furniture. Uh, eight or 10, 12, whatever it was. My first time was this past Tuesday with Kendall Williams and Orville and there are a bunch of good people out there, so men are welcome. Women too, y'all come on. We'll let you buy breakfast. So, but anyway, let me get off this thing. Lord, as we uh, we sit here this morning and we came to worship you this morning, we came to have fellowship and check on each other and to love on each other, Lord, pat each other on the back main reason we came this morning, Lord, was to hear your word, and we just ask that you be with Daryl and be with our music this morning, and oh, well, just let us worship you. Reading First Corinthians this week and studying and read and went through chapter 13, love, 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 Lord, don't matter what we do, we ain't nothing. That's exactly what the Bible tells us. We ain't nothing if we don't do it without love. I sat there and hmm, things just go through your mind and I want to say thank you. Thank you for having people around me that love me. Hard to believe sometimes, but a sinner like me. We were talking earlier this week about things coming up through our life and things that we have done. Yeah, I'm most up to tell anybody there are a lot of things out there I'm ashamed of some of the things I did. But oh, would you uh, you came around and gave me a good kicking and told me, okay, it's time to straighten up, fly right, and here I am. And I say thank you. Be with the ones that are sick. Be with the ones that are not doing good uh, be with the ones that couldn't get out this morning and come and just ask that you wrap your arms around them, Lord. Let them feel your presence. Fill them with your spirit. Fill them with you, Lord. We say thank you, and we love you. We give you all the honor and give you all the glory. And again, we say thank you. In Jesus' name, we all say morning. We're going to open it up, the worship part, with an old hymn. I'm pretty sure you like this one of my favorites. It's called Great is Thy Faithfulness. And uh, if you will, I'm going to ask you to stand and sing it with us. Guitar on. Shane's going to play the acoustic there. How about? Give him a little view.
seated for a moment. I think I was missing somewhere when we did the first part. I, I got this, this ear stopped up, and so when I sing, I feel like I got my head inside of a barrel singing. I hope it doesn't sound like I'm in a barrel singing, but it does like to me, so y'all bear with me. But do we got any more announcements? Are we good on the announcements? Okay. Huh? Yeah. There's somebody that I really loved had a birthday today. Who was that person? Jane Gunner. That's who it was. I knew it was. You can say something, but I can't hear you. Okay, so what I heard out of my good ear was that the ladies' retreat is still on for Friday, and if you want to go, you need to be here ready to go Friday, 4.30. Y'all pulling out at 4.30, so if you ain't here by 4.30, you'll be left behind, as the movie says. And you need to bring some cash to go out to eat, right? 25-ish? Okay. That pretty much sums it up. All right, um... So besides Jane Gunner, one of my favorite people in the whole world, you know why I love Jane? Because Jane smiles at me when I sing. <laughs> Most of y'all just refuse to do that. I don't know why. If y'all got something against me or if I did something to make you mad, if you'll tell me what it is, I'll try to make it right. But uh, that's why. That's one of the many reasons I love Jane. <laughs> There's a lot more. Thelma O'Neill's birthday is tomorrow. Let's remember Miss Velma Fail. Chris Hilton's birthday. Jimmy and Vicky. North. Vicki, I'd like to offer you my condolences on however long it is you've been married to Jimmy. How long? How many years is it? Whew, Jesus. Bless you. That's all I can say. Jerry and Velma have an anniversary. Ken and Jane. My goodness, this is a red letter week. How many years? 54. No way. Dang, y'all must get killed up. So congratulations to all y'all on these. Um, so now we're going we fixing to pick up the excitement a little bit. I got two of my friends are gonna come up, Evan and Ryan. I'm gonna grab my guitar, and hopefully all this technology comes together, and we're gonna do a couple of up tempo songs. pray for my ear. Th this is probably one of the few times when I actually have a valid excuse for singing off key. Okay. Y'all can't sit down and sing these either now, by the way. I mean, unless you physically need to sit down. If you need to sit down, you go ahead. But if you're able... Everybody on? Can I get a little more of me? I'm, I'm not trying to make it all about me. I just can't help. Can't hear Shane too good either. Hit, hit yours or back. All right, I hear it back. Okay. You on? How about my right hand man on the vocals there? Tap your tap tap your mic there. Oh yeah. All right. Yeah. 
Just as you are before your God. Come. One day every tongue will confess you are God. And one day every knee will bow. And if you'll remain standing, we got one more we want to do. Give Rebecca a second. I'll switch over. She's going to sing with me on this one. Our worship team is hit by COVID also. I think it's uh, more of a question now of just kind of trying to obey the, the guidelines. I think everybody is pretty well over it, but I told someone this morning, I'll be glad when I come to a point in my life where I never even hear the word COVID again. I'm praying. <laughs> Can I get an amen? I'm praying for that day. But in the meantime, in sickness and health and good and bad and clogged ears and whatever, I thank God. I think 
anybody sound better even old people with clogged up ears you know Stan I was just telling Scott I, I said when you hear them together and I said they're just good and you are anybody give them encouragement <laughs> Mr. Ken would you come sit right here for me I didn't ask permission but trust me <laughs> Stanley where are you come right here sit right here for me just because I got swords doesn't mean anything. Trust me. Actually, a very neat verse we're going to go over that I've studied deeper and wider this morning. And the Lord has blessed my heart with it. So I want us to spend time on the verse. Hold this for me. Hold this. Don't cut yourself. So children, let's look at our, our memory verse. And let's read it together. We'll just do verse 17. As iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. So I got some iron right here. You see it? Now, this is used to um, sharpen for me, but a real um, person like a butcher would know it's, it's used to keep the sword straight. But it's also used to sharpen and pull out the sword a little bit. This is my sword from Japan. And when I was in the martial arts, we would, I would never use this in practice, but we would use sticks. And sometimes we get hit with the stick and we know that if that was a sword, we were in trouble. And we would practice with that. But this sword is, is very sharp and um, shiny. Show them the shine on it without taking a chance of... Uh, making it dangerous for anybody. So isn't that neat? So this piece of iron and that piece of iron together need each other because the purpose of this one is to keep that one shiny and sharp. And it's in its youth and it's strong. Now I would like to have Mr. Ray or Mr. Steve look at this sword I got it from my father when I was there last summer. I got a number of things that are from Lebanon that I remember my grandpa Amel having when I was a little boy, and now they're in my house. But I also got this sword. I've been told it's made to go on a, a gun, a rifle, maybe back one of the earlier wars. I would like to be educated more about it in its shape. But I, I wanted Mr. Re uh, excuse me, you are kin, to hold it. Now, does this sword look as young as that sword? Which one do you think's older? This one is much, much older. Which one do you think is sharper? Hmm. Which one do you think is stronger in strength? And that's why I asked Mr. Ken to come here. Because maybe my purpose in church is to keep everybody sharp in the word of God as iron sharpens iron. And it's very important that we work on the next generation, which includes all of y'all, to be dedicated and to be sharp for Christ. But just as that is my job for the future generations, it is my job 
for our mature generation, see I use mature, not old, thank you, um, to keep them sharp for Christ too. Because our elders, the Bible says to honor because they're the strength to the church. But we all need each other. Does that make sense? One of the trends of the day that's getting worse with COVID is the forsaking of the attendance of believers. And it started many years ago. And I've never seen somebody do well that starts not going to church. I've watched that downward pattern as a pastor. And you say as a young child, well, why am I needed at church? Because if you weren't here, what was Dandy and Evangelina do to serve God? Because God's called them to serve you. And they're called to train you up. And one day you're going to serve others. And then Ken is here. And like all our elders, maybe some of the things they used to do, and I'm saying this out of absolute respect, are not as easy to do. But he has so many other things that he does for his pastor and others of wisdom and thought and encouragement and prayer. And when I have things I'm thinking about, I feel very safe with Ken to sit down and talk about them. Ken's even called me on the phone and say, Daryl, let's think about this. This may be a mistake. See, a lot of people don't know that we're that good of friends. And when you call me, I know I can listen to you. How many of you think that he, Ken is very valuable to the church? How many of you think Stanley's very valuable? How many of you think the children are very valuable? As iron sharpens iron, we all are at different places of life, but we all need each other. Because it's a purpose of the heart. Go to verse 19 for me. Proverbs 27. As in water, face reflects face. So our continents, our, our beings are to reflect Jesus Christ. And what shows our relationship with Christ is how we act. So a man's heart reveals the man. So what's the purpose of coming to church? To be the young sword or the older sword or the sword sharpener? Is the purpose of coming to church if you're a musician to do music or if you're the preacher to do preaching or is the purpose of church that if you're a sound man to do sound or if you're now the light man and the internet man to make sure that's on? And I say, no, that's not the purpose. The purpose of coming to church is to know God. You know the greatest purpose in life is to know God. And when we know him in spirit and truth and worship him like that, then we can be very good at our gift. Whether we're music or sound or children minister. But what's the primary purpose of our life then? It's to know God. And then we can all sharpen each other. So how many of y'all came to church this morning saying, I just want to know God better? How many of you think that might be a good reason to come to church? And that's our kickoff for the year. It got delayed a few weeks with sickness that I had. But our primary purpose in life is to know God. And we open our Bibles and we read. Why don't we pray? I just want to know you better today, God, to know your ways. And I want to know you as Lord. I just don't want to know you. I want to know you as my Lord. Because when you are my Lord, my heart is ready to live for you. All of a sudden, we change our whole goal in life. New year is a good time for a new goal. I've set my goal. I want to know him and lordship like never before. What do you think, Pastor Stanley?
this one. Mm, that's a good question. Pastor Stanley will teach you that after church. <laughs> Maybe its purpose is not to be sharp, but to stay rough to sharpen the other. Why don't you pray for us as Anne's on her way? Father, we thank you for this time that we have had with you. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you that you give us the ability to hear it, that we can hear it and that you fill it up with truth. That it not be dulled to us, but that, Father, God, you would give us the wisdom and the understanding to be able to hear it. God, I pray that all the children of God would hear it. Um, Lord God, I thank you, God. I thank you, Father, God, that I know that you're Thank you, Mr. Ken. I hope I was was very respectful to you, sir. Thank you. Good morning. Good to see everyone this morning. Quick reminder from the uh, youth side of things we will have m m tomorrow night so uh that'll be at six o'clock so we'd love to see our youth there anybody sixth grade and up we would love to have you be a part of our m m ministry if you have your bibles we are in philippians chapter 3 verses 12 through 14 once you find your spot if you're able, if you would, please stand for the reading of God's word. Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. You may be seated. Let us pray. Father, as I open your word, I pray you open our hearts. Direct our hearts that our purpose will be clear, our goals will be set, and our spirit will grow strong. Guide my words, Lord God. And I ask this Christ in your most powerful name. Amen. So I have in front of you, or in front of myself, Wednesday night's message in Ezekiel. And it's so neat, months ago I started studying Ezekiel very deeply. And if you've ever studied Ezekiel, it's going to challenge you. And just as I started studying the prophecy of Ezekiel, which I believe absolutely applies to America today, I see the Old, Gen Old Testament ending in a way the New Testament's going to end. But what I saw in chapter 7 kind of sums up. The people were God's people by birthright, and they identified through Abraham. Although it got to the time in Ezekiel, if you study it deeply, the people did not honor God in their actions and in their ways. The false prophets of the day, and this is in chapter 7, if you want to go back to my notes, I will provide them for you. The false prophets of the day said, don't worry, God won't judge his people. I believe we live in a time 
of false prophets that are not work centered. And the judgment of God begins where? In the house of God. So in that day, God judged his people. But I want to bring you now to the very last verse of Ezekiel 7 to understand the heart of God. He says, the king will mourn, the prince will be clothed with desolation, the hands of the common people will tremble, and I will do to them according to their way. And according to what they deserve, I will judge them. And this is the kicker that brings me back to the other study I've been doing for the last few months deeply. Then they shall know I am the Lord. How many think there's a better way than God's judgment to know he is Lord? I'm asking you, what's your purpose of coming to church? Could it be the purpose the devil could use, especially the COVID years, like the last 20 years, to have people having religious activities, but not consistent with God's purpose? Could it be that if we're not careful, starting with me, if I come to church with my primary goal to preach a good sermon, how many of y'all think I haven't done well and I failed? Because you could preach a polished sermon and not be right with God. Could it be my primary purpose when I come to church is to know God and to know him as Lord? And God uses me as preaching so others will be sharpened. That's my call. Could it be that if the musicians are not careful that their primary purpose to come to church is to know God, even their music could be misled. Anybody say amen? Or the sound people, if we get so caught up in sound, and I'm not picking on anyone, picking on me first, could it be that our distractions become our failure? Now think about this. I, I'm setting a tone. Could it be then that our works for God could be counterproductive than our experiencing God in spirit and truth and in worship. And I believe that sets a tone that we can be very careful of. In the book that I'm studying deeply now, Knowing God, and it's a powerful book, it brings us to that point as what were we made for? And the fact is I am made to know God. I am created in his image, and so are you. I pray we never get to the point we think we know him because he is beyond what we can even.
even, thank you, sir, that even our ministry can become our idol if they take our primary purpose. Let's go back to the, <laughs> the devil does not want this message going to your soul. And, you know, over the years, I've seen pastor get angry, pastors, when there's malfunctions. Go to my shop one day. There's malfunctions in life. And we push through them. Amen. No one's fault. We find a solution. So. Our goal is to know God. But to not just know him, the devil knows him. Our goal is not to know scripture. The devil knows scripture and did everything to twist it. Now, I want to know scripture because it tells us the essence of God, the purpose of God, the future with God. It tells us our moral code. It tells us what sin is. But it's the issue of the heart. There's a difference. I want to know him as Lord. Because when you know him as Lord, what comes right in hand with that is obedience. And when you know him as Lord and your heart wants to please him, comes growth and comes strength. And comes direction. And Philippians is the greatest book in counseling, by the way. If you ever want to counsel someone, the chapters break out counseling. But in Philippians, it goes deeper. It says, yet indeed, I count all things a loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. Nothing else is compares. You want to know the strength of our life? is to know Jesus Christ as Lord. And with Lordship, he takes my failures and he lifts me up to a higher level. Amen? And he teaches me my wrongs. And he gives me the strength of repentance and to turn to a better way. With his Lordship, he's the one that is the iron that sharpens me and sharpens me and sharpens me. Lest I grow dull. The apostasy of the day. Now, brother, and this is Second Thessalonians 2, 1 and 2. Concerning the come of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gathering together to him. That's what church is. We gather together for Christ. You'll see my news article I wrote. It comes out. Cindy will mail it to you. My greatest concern is for those who have said, I'll see you after COVID's done, is where their families are going to be in five and ten years. Because my boys and all our children and grandchildren need to have a spirit of determination to be the generation of determination that our goal is to seek God's face and we need each other. And the coming together for the Lord Jesus Christ is what God knew was the very best way for us to go him, grow in him. You can say, what about this ministry? What about that ministry? What about missions? That's my primary. And I am all about missions. Don't get me wrong. But anything we make our primary that's not centered on knowing Jesus Christ will get us doing the works of the Lord outside the spirit of the Lord. Are you with me? The strength of the church in the future to continue to be strong in missions is grow up a generation that knows him as Lord and then we serve him as Lord. 
the spirit of apostasy. Now, the spirit expressly says in the later times, I believe we're living in the later times. I do. In the later times, some will depart from the faith. And what happens when we depart from the faith or depart from the gathering? Giving heed to deceiving spirits, doctrine of demons, speaking lies and hypocrisy, the conscience seared. When we come together, we say, I want to know you, God, and I want to know you as you are. Because if I don't have the unity with other believers to sharpen each other, to challenge each other, to all want to grow in Christ together, what the spirit of the world will do, world, is we will create God in our image. And we are living in a time where many churches, I call them churches softly, are creating God to be in their image according to their ways. Are y'all with me still? In Ezekiel days, the prophets stopped preaching on sin and judgment and preached on, don't worry, you're of the family of Abraham. Could it be we live in those times if we're not careful? The prophets of today will stop preaching on sin and judgment and repentance and obedience and say, don't worry, you're a child of grace. Where I feel as a child of grace, my heart loves God and wants to live for him. Amen. So look how the Old Testament ends, dark ages. Look at the prophecies of the New Testament. All I know is my call is to preach the whole word of God. Amen. So that we'll know him. J.L. Packer goes deep into the trends of the church. Let me spend time on that. Three trends. The first trend. This is the current day. That Christian minds have been conformed to the modern spirit. The spirit that is that spawns great thoughts of men and leaves room only for small thoughts of God. The modern way with God is to set him at a distance, if not deny him altogether. And the irony is that modern Christians, preoccupied with maintaining religious practices in an irreligious world, have themselves to allow God to become remote. Our desire is to know him, to know him as Lord. And we have a personal relationship with God that's alive it is living he speaks to us he walks with us we spend time with him and we are his I believe five and ten years from now only then will we see the devastation these last two years have brought with isolation and remote relationships. Trend two is that Christian minds have been confused by the modern skepticism and the Bible has been come under heavy fire. And I told y'all I was so disappointed this last go around when I was searching what church and where God would lead me. And even I fumbled it up and God corrected it. Praise God. I'm glad to be here. But what bothered me the most is how many churches wanted me to come and preach. But I said, before I come and preach, I want to know where you stand on the word of God. Do you know how many told me Southern Baptist churches? Well, we believe some of the tales in the Bible didn't really happen. And we don't believe all of God's word. And I just kindly said, I'm not coming. Because we'll never get along. The modern day skeptics of God's truth have brought it along with it. A modern day skeptics of true believers 
that messes with their mind. Why do I go to a church if the church ain't true? I should say is true. Mom would let me know is not true. My mom was an English teacher. She had a fit with me. Trend number three, Spurgeon talked about many years ago, and I'm going to bounce off these. It's going deep, and I pray you stay with me. Ninety years ago, Spurgeon described the wobblings that he saw amongst Baptists on Scripture and atonement and human destiny and the downgrade. What would he say now? Why am I saying this? Because in the last few months, I have been so encouraged by the study I'm in that my primary call is to know God and to know him as Lord and to live like he is God Almighty and Lord Almighty, and I am his child that wants to please him. And to do that, I must say, and be in tune with him, the very mind and the very heart of God. What if the church world, we all come to church on Sunday praying, today I just want to know you, God. I'm going to spend less time thinking about everybody else in more time just thinking of you. I'm going to spend less time on all the worries of the world and finances and work and relationships, and I'm going to spend more time just saying, God, I want to know you. In my meditation, in my prayers, in my quiet time, I cry out, God, I want to know you. Reveal yourself to me, God. Reveal yourself more. Reveal what I do and you don't like. But what happened to God's church? Now I want to talk about the difference of goal setting in the Old Testament compared to the goal setting of the New Testament of grace. In the Old Testament, Psalm 119, I'll read a few verses, 1 through 8. <clears throat> Look at the works-oriented relationship with God. Blessed are the undefiled in the way, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with the whole heart, and also do no inequity. They walk in his ways. You have commanded us to keep your precepts diligently. Oh, that they were directed to keep your statutes. Then I would not be ashamed. When I look into your commandments, I will praise you with uprightness of heart. When I learn your righteous judgments, I will keep your statutes. Oh, do not forsake me utterly. And we see God gave us in the Old Testament the law, his statutes, and his judgments so we would walk in his ways. And Jesus Christ came on the scene, and he said, yes, I uphold all that, but we're going to do that through a pure and personal relationship with God is my strength. Because how can we keep the statutes of God and the laws of God outside a personal relationship with God? You must be born again. Now look at the New Testament now in Philippians 3, 10 and 11. And these are the verses I've memorized and keep going over in my heart. This is where I want to be. I want to know him. I, I just want to know him. I'm not going to tell you I know him. I've had people say, I've heard those verses preached before. I don't need to hear that pre preacher, that sermon. I've heard the book of Ezekiel before. I'm good on that. And I look at him and I'm thinking, I'm so, so sad. It must be hard to be you because the word of God is alive and living. And every time I go into it, I go deeper and wider and I learn more and I learn more. On the way here driving, I was talking to Scott, and I said, Scott, you know, I said, this, this verse, sharp, iron sharpens iron. And I called up Shelly, bring my swords. I got here, and I studied deeper, and it came alive like it never did before. What if we saw the word of God and the knowing God like that? Is God will lead us and bring things alive. And we may have heard it a hundred times, but he has got something new today. There's a gem in that rough. You didn't see it before, but he's going to show you where it is. There's a diamond you got to seek. And you'll find it. And all of a sudden it comes alive and it comes alive. 
And I started studying, and I always thought iron sharpens irons, two swords. And I got studying, what about the foul? That's the iron, too. I'm like, wow, Lord, I got to go deeper. I want to know you, God. And all of a sudden, God says, there's the church. We're all different. And we need to be collectively together because we all need each other. I'm like, oh, Lord, I'm so excited about your word. And God gave us what we need to know him. When we open the scriptures, I've often said every word of every verse is important. Ask God why every word is there. And then ask God, through this, how can I know you better? But going deeper to know you better as Lord. You say, where does the Lordship come in the verse? That I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Christ rose from the grave. And he says, you are a new creation. The old is gone. The new has come. Christians, we are to have a resurrected life in Christ. Our baptism into the water, symbolic, a death of the old life without Christ, out of the water, the victorious resurrected and living a life now, Jesus is Lord. And it represents our grave one day. My grave will be empty. I want to know the power of your resurrection, God Almighty. But what the world may see is death and destruction. I see beyond that as victory, resurrection, and hope. I see the days we're in as a day to grow more mightily in Christ than ever before. I have always grown the most personally in Christ when I went through the hardest of times. I've told y'all, but not in a long time now, probably the first year I was here, I would tell you, and, and the doctor came in, and they said, your wife isn't going to live. Most likely, she will have a stroke or a heart attack. Tyson was 4.2 pounds in the little thing, and I was supposed to feed him. Shelly was in the bed and in a coma state, and they say, do not turn on the lights because if you even turn on the lights, it will cause a stroke or a heart attack. I watched her body swell up, her kidneys shut down, her liver go out of control, the ratings, whatever it was. Her body was so toxic. I got on my knees and said, Faith, wife, oh God. And I felt and heard his voice. I will sustain her. The next time the doctor came in and when my mother-in-law came in and others came in and said, she's not going to make it. I said, we won't have that. God said he'll sustain her life. And about three or four days later, I saw her hold her baby for the first time. Can anybody say amen? When do you think I experienced God the most? When after 20 years of being told we couldn't have children or 14 you think I experienced God the most that when I found out she was pregnant at 40 and I was 44? Or nine months later, when God sustained her life and spoke to my heart and I was on my knees in tears. Amen. What if with that mindset, with the times we're going through and different discouragements, and one thing that's happened in the last month Come along December, we thought we were pushing on beyond this, amen, and making church plans and the like. And it came back, and people are still trying to digest and move forward, and it's discouraging. But what if we use the emotions that God has given us to double down on our determination? I can't control the outside, but God, you control the inside, and I just want to know you better and the power of your resurrection, which means obedience, lordship. Next goal. And the fellowship of his sufferings. Has anybody got any suffering in your life? I think we all do, don't we? 
what if our fellowships with God, we can say, even in my sufferings, I have a closer fellowship. It only brings me closer. And there will be the telltale in five years, I believe. For many, their testimony will be, don't you know the COVID years were the very best years of my relationship with God? They brought me closer. They brought healings in my life. But others will say, something happened and I, through those years of suffering, I fell away. And that's why I'm not being soft in saying our number one goal should be the attendance and the fellowship to know him better. One is the foul. One may be the older sword. One may be the younger, sharper sword. But we're all God's iron. Somebody say amen. And he pulls us together. The next goal, and we're going to break these down in the months ahead. Being conformed to his death. What in Christ's death did we see more than anything else was the heart of God. I'm amazed where God Almighty on the cross, Jesus would say, forgive them, Father. They know not what they do. Has anybody ever been deeply wounded by somebody? I would challenge to say, like me, there were probably different thoughts that are coming out. What if we can grow so close to God and knowing him that when we're wounded, we'll cry out, forgive them, Father. They know not. They know not. They don't know you like I know you. Why would I expect anything other than this from them? Forgive them, Father. They know not. Into your hands, I commit my spirit. What if suffering and pain, we are so attuned to knowledge of God, we can cry into your hands, I commit my spirit, and it's committed in goodness, it's committed in health, and it's committed in sickness. And for me to live as Christ and to die as gain, and I have committed myself into your hands, that if I die, it is gain. I see you on the other side. Conform to the image of his death. Where we say, nevertheless, Father, thy will be done. My life didn't go as I planned. Anybody have that testimony? You know, one of the last conversations my mom had with me 15 years ago Daryl, this is not how I thought my life would go. But nevertheless, thy will be done, Father. Anybody say amen? The last conversation I had with my mom, you know, we videotaped it. Mama and my stepfather was leading the way. Do you want to go see Jesus? Yes. I want to go see Jesus. The next day she saw Jesus. Anybody say amen? What if we live our lives to be so close to him? This may not go the direction I hoped. My prayers, how I wanted them, may not have been answered. But they were answered. And I'm conformed to the death of Christ. That even if I go down, I'm going up. Amen? And I'll see you on the other side. I tell people when I go on vacation, I'll see you on the other side. Don't say that, Daryl. I said, well, the other side of the vacation, I'll see you. But if I die on vacation fishing, I'll see you in heaven. Either way, I'm good. Anybody say amen? 
back to focus. Goal. Could it be we've all have been distracted from our primary goal? I have been. I had to make decisions I never thought of or studied in seminary. Outside church, how do you do that? Inside church, how do you restart that? Mask, no mask, and all these things that I've second-guessed myself a thousand times. Could it be that God is calling his church back? Don't let all these distractions take you away from me. Because that's just what the devil wants. Is to pull the church apart. To pull the families apart. To break what he can break. This is why it's more important than ever for me and my wife and my boy that's with me to be together in church. Can anybody say amen? It's more importantly than ever before for families to come together with the same goal. We come here to know God. My concern, if you'll read the newsletter, is what is going to happen to families in five and ten years if we don't stay true and determined and dedicated. My concern is what are our children going to see? Will they see the resolve to keep the main thing, the main thing. And that is God Almighty. And there's a number of things I preached on today that could be seem like I'm trying to step on toes. But God wouldn't allow me not to speak freely. I believe we got an amazing year in front of us. I don't know what it holds. But I do believe this. Four months ago, God put a focus of Ezekiel and a focus of Philippians 3 on my heartbeat. And I didn't know they came together so beautifully. Philippians verse 14. Bringing back to conclusion the verse I just read. Or verses. So I press towards the goal for the prize of the upward call in Jesus Christ. I press. That's exciting. And as I press, look how it ends. Let us all be of the same mind. Let's press. Let's press. Any discouragement that may come in the future, let's press. The upward call The main goal is to know him as Lord. Because this is what I believe is around the corner. The Bible said, just like that. Heaven is right there, just like that. And Jesus says that those will come to him and say, but Jesus... And Jesus will say, I never knew you. He speaks of the talents. He said, what did you do with the talents I gave you? Well, I buried them in the sand. And I've thought a lot about this. He says, be gone from me, from me you wicked servant. But God, I was scared. And all of a sudden, this comes alive like I've never seen it before. I'm not going to bury my talents. 
I'm not going to live afraid. Amen? I'm going to live to know him. And then I can excel to earthling in my preaching. Amen? But if we don't keep our goals straight, we're going to look back. Oh, by the way, I started this study four months ago. And I'm not saying there were marriage problems. There wasn't. I mean, there was because I'm involved in it, but other than that, it was good. But what I am saying, has anybody been married for a while? You have your ups and downs and lefts and rights. What I am saying, the last four months have been so sweet. They've been amazing. Right at home with a fool like me, God is amazing. Something's happened, and I love it, and I want that for you. I want to know him. I want to know the power of his resurrection, and I want that in our family. I want to be in the fellowship of his sufferings, and I want to be conformed while I add the image of his death, his resurrection. I'm asking you right now, do you know Jesus as Lord? I didn't ask if you were baptized. For many years, people asked me why I was going to heaven. I told them my mama baptized me as a baby. I'm good. And I was hell bound until Christ saved my soul. When I got saved, I told mom I'm being baptized. Will you come? She says, why are you taking that from me, Daryl? I said, Mama, how does your baptism work? She goes, not good. You're troubled. I said, yeah, it didn't take because you made that decision for me, Mama. Now I made it. And I looked at her and I said, you'll see. This is real, Mom. I'm asking you, have you made your choice that Jesus Christ is Lord? That he died on the cross for your sins. It is your choice. And nobody can do that for you. He must be Lord. And Savior. When you come to Christ and confess your sin. And ask him to forgive your sin. And you know the guilt of your sin is eating you alive. And only God's grace can save you. That you're not good enough and you can't do anything good enough. That you need God. That's when you're in a place of salvation. And you ask God to forgive you. And to be your Lord. If you've never made him your Lord. Right now. Let's do it. Maybe this last six months and two years. You've been distracted. time to dedicate I want to know you and live as Lord maybe you need to rededicate your life maybe you need a church home I'm here to receive you let's stand and we'll close this service
Jesus, I come into thy blessed world to abide. Jesus, I come to Out of myself you dwell in thy love. Out of this earth into Before we close, I just want to say when when Pastor um, put the uh, put the scripture up there, I opened my Bible and it reminded me of a, a lesson that I had with the kids. And at the right in, beside the scriptures that he preached on today, it said, "What is your assignment?" Which is the question I asked the kids. And so I asked you these two questions this morning, like the pastor said: Do you know him? Do you know him? And if the answer to that is yes, what is your assignment? What does he want you to do? And if you don't know, or if the answer to, do do you know your assignment? If the answer to that is not yes, then I ask you to pray about that. Because you're never too old or too wise to have an assignment from God. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for this message. I do pray, Lord, that Lord, that every person standing in this room knows you. I pray, God, that as we continue to fight towards our goal, which ultimately, Lord, is to be with you one day father that we would continue to support one another father that we would continue to study your word that we would continue to seek your guidance father we lift those up who have been isolated lord those who have been sick those who are hurting father may we lord may we continue to reach out to them May we continue to do what we can to lighten their load. Father, we love you. I ask that you be with each and every family represented here today as they leave. Lord, that you would keep them safe until the next appointed time. We love and thank you. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.